and I'm all alone on my own by my lonesome and there ain't a single another soul around I wanna dig into my guitar band the blues riff that hang over everything and I'm by myself in the states I'm cause down under or wherever it is I'll live when it's evening you know I speed read the morning news and come up with my own little song Oh, so two. Courtney Barnett, Kurt Vile. Uh, Mark Scotty reporting today. Introducing some new music for you there. I heard some new music. New music. Step- so, I'm going to do some, uh, some speed read the morning news. Uh, speed read some morning news. So, we got. Um, Let's talk about Christchurch video, uh, videos, videos now. There's videos floating around. Illegal 10 years in prison in New Zealand. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Yellow Vest Revolution and Macron, his, uh, where is he? Where is he throughout all this cra- craziness? How the fuck is Macron? Huh? Uh, Venezuelan coup failure, still failing, failing miserably, lying, the cheating of the United States government. Poverty in America, right? The homelessness, right? There's homelessness all over Seattle and New York and all over the country, right? There's fucking poverty, right? In the greatest nation on earth, we got poverty. And what's the common thread? So let's jump right into this. Uh, yeah, man, yeah, man. So first, before the, oh, before I do that, let me, uh, I have one more, um, one more, one more item for auction. I got this uh, yellow vest if you're interested, right? For for the for a donation of twenty five dollars, look, I signed it. See where I signed it? Ah, uh, Marcus Conte. I'll put your name on it if you want to. I'll sign this shit. Man. So, pick up that, and um, I throw in some. I throw in some stickers for you. I throw in some new new stickers, old sticker. Whoever gives me twenty five dollars first gets it. First come, first serve. I only got one left. I still have my yellow vest. You're not getting my yellow vest. <laughs> Well, I mean, everybody has a price, but you're not getting my yellow vest right now. Um, so also, here, here's how you pay for it. You hit the, uh, you go to the channel, you hit PayPal, and uh, bang, you put in the PayPal stuff, right? Or you become a Patreon, really. That's, I know, I got to do these commercials. I know it's, 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 it's so, it's so uh, distracting to, to uh, have to, to do this, but I'm looking, we're moving up, right? See? Every day, there's more Patreons coming to the fold, right? We need. We, I want to get 300 Spartans. Join now and become a Patreon of this channel. So, um, what do we got? So, let's talk about the the Christchurch uh, shootings. The videos now circulating. We've got confirmed one video of the shooter shooting the place up the full 16 and a half minutes now there's another two minute video floating around i've seen both of them there's the one now in the aftermath where actual victims are holding up their cameras showing it search around i mean i i can't it's there's probably five or six people shot in the video you see bloodstream you see you see everything you see the terror of uh, of the uh, gun violence right so so I, I wanted to just put out there with uh, regarding the investigation into the killer. All right, this is good. It's all good, right? There's no you can't say it isn't a false flag or a higher conspiracy until you rule it out. So checking his travel plans and all that stuff is excellent. He's been to like five different nations, Pakistan. He's he's infatuated with the uh, the Serb, the, the Turks and the uh, you know whatever the fucking Yugoslavian thing, right? Whatever is whatever his obsession is. What I what I will say is, people travel for a lot of different reasons. I've been I've traveled outside of the country, and what happens now? Uh, something goes wrong, and you're going to blame me, hold my travels uh, against me. Right? So just I'm I'm just saying. Proceed with caution, right? Travel doesn't necessarily mean he's out there, you know, terror plotting, right? The other thing is when people are on vacation, if they truly are traveling, they take a lot of pictures. So where's his pictures, you know? Things that you got to look at, right? Uh, so, you know, gun grab, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about guns, gun grab, a rights, overall rights grab through this thing, right? That's what the, uh, you know, the oligarchs want. They, they want you to be quiet, they want you to be uh, unarmed, 
you know, stupid, gaslit. That, we have to change that. So in Christchurch, gun, um, you know, censored. Uh, we're seeing censorship now. Ten years in prison in you in in uh, New Zealand for for uh, having possession of a video. Unbelievable, right? So church, uh, Christchurch uh, shop. Here's the gun grab. Uh, sold rifles online to accused shooter. Yeah, okay, so it's a gun shop, and they, that's what they do. They sell guns, right? And the shooter got his gun from a gun shop. Okay, what is the point? Again, always look at the source, AP. So they're going to try to vilify the gun. Right? A Christchurch gun shop on Monday acknowledged selling guns online to 28-year-old white supremacist. Not confirmed he's a white supremacist. This is the... Right, he's a he's a separatist. It's di- it's a different it's a difference. Accused of killing fifty people in mosque shooting that have upturned uh, New Zealand's reputation as being one of the most tolerant in the world. Again, there's evidence that he's not a racist at all. He's he's a separatist. He believes in his own homeland. Right? Again, not justifying it, just clarifying what's the spin before it spins out of control. At a news conference, gun city owner Dave Tipple said the store sold four guns and ammunition to Brenton Harris, Harrison Tarrant through a police-verified online mail order process. The store detected nothing ex- uh, extraordinary about the buyer, he said. Because right, there is nothing or, uh, extraordinary about the buyer. He's just a guy, right? So you got to easy does it, right? Easy does it with the conspiracy, right? There's There's now... Factual, documented evidence, in my view, uh, direct evidence of the shooting occurred. Right, that 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 there's actual kills in the in the in the shooting. He's an actual shooter, in my opinion. You can have your own opinion. Have your own opinion. Enjoy your own opinion. My opinion. It's my video. It's my channel. It's my opinion that that what I saw is is valid and real, and and it actually occurred the way it did. Right. So. So that's all I want to say about this. This is gun grab going on. They're they're going to keep you know sy- sympathizing with the um, you know the the victims, and this is all good. It's all it's all good that there's you know there's we're we're sympathetic to the vi- to the victims. However, in this country we have a uh, we have the right to bear arms, right? So so that's it on uh what else do I want to say about that? Okay, so that that's really it. it, it the, the rights grab in, in New Zealand is going on. We still need to deep dive into the background of the individual. I'm not so interested in the memes or his manifesto or the other bullshit copy and paste stuff that it appears to be. Not bullshit, but it it's kind of it's kind of smokescreen, right? Let's look at the actual player. How did he finance it? He's traveling around the world. He's he's in and out of countries, hard to hard to get to countries like 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 North Korea, Pakistan, right? Very difficult to, to get in there as a tourist. And he's been get he got in and out a few times. Where did he get the money? Who financed him? Right? The the idea that he made a bunch of money as a uh, as a pseudo investor in some kind of cryptocurrency thing is is not real because that came after the fact. He had already done his his um, his his investments. Right, his travels prior to that investment. So that's bullshit, right there. So where did he get the money? Did he work? Is he did did, did he inherit it? All right, people get money from a lot of different places. So let's not jump to conclusions. Let's find out the facts about it, right? So in Paris, let's let's flip to uh, yellow vests. The yellow vests are still tearing it up, man. They are tearing it up, right? Why? Because of income and wealth inequality, right? There's still massive income and wealth inequality around the world. In our country, in America, right, but in in France, it hit a boiling point, right, where the the dollar, the the value of their euro, is 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 less, right? Hyperinflation, right? They've been priced out of simple things, right? They don't have enough money for food to live. It's abject poverty, right? It's it's extreme in France right now, and they, they hit the boiling point, the tipping point. And they're tired of it, right? So you're continuing to see it. Riots, they're not letting up, right? In our country, 60% of the people in in America don't have $400 to their name, right? One in seven on food stamps. 80% of the country living paycheck to paycheck. 
abject poverty everywhere. Uh, even if you have a job, you need two jobs. Slave nation, austerity. You're stupid. You're lazy. You won't work. Right? It's the same message here in, in, in France. And now they burn the fucking place to the ground. Right? Instead, we've got, you know, austerity, you know, here, and tax breaks for the corporations and the billionaires that don't need it. Right? Austerity for everyone else. Right? Yeah, they set a church on fire. It's just they, they, they're not letting up, right? That's what that's the overall common thread in this whole thing is that it's it, it stems from poverty. We don't have poverty in America, right? You don't see poverty. Well, I'm going to show you that there is poverty. Right, so so you've got all this stuff going on here in, in the yellow vests. There's other, I think we've seen a lot of these images. I mean, they're burning the place. Now, now it's like, remember the bakery? The bakery that blew up? Now you got uh, fires breaking out. Everybody, when I said, oh, the bakery was, oh, that was an accident. No, it's not a fucking accident. They're doing it. Right? It's not a fucking accident. They're, they're, they're playing hard for yeah. right? It's real, man. It's real fire, real. Right? So there you go. I mean, there's, there's the evidence that if they're not, is it random? Is it. Is it just by chance? No, it's it's the reality of the situation. It's that austerity. It's like you can only squeeze people so much, you know, and and a system fails them only so much, right? And then and then you you, you lash out. Right? That's what you see. We don't have it here because Americans are too we're too proud, we're too stubborn, right? Too stubborn. Right? We got it too good. Now they're looting. They're, they're, Boss, American, American store, loot it. Now well, expect more of it, right? You know, you reap what you sow, right? What do we got here? It's a war zone. That's a great image right there. Guys like. Yeah, dude, 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 totally, dude. That's a good one too, man. Some fucking good images, man. What's this all about? Ah, uh... <laughs> it's crazy, man. People fighting with their hands, and look at the cops. The cops got they got guns drawn. Man. Guns drawn, gas, tear gas. I'm going. All right, so evidence, right? I lived my whole life for revolution. All right, so so that's what's going on there, right? You got all this shit going on. So let's flip to Venezuela now. What's going on in Venezuela? There's nothing in common, right? There's no common thread. You don't see the common thread? All right, so in, in France, the place is a humanitarian crisis, really, there's violence breaking out in the street. People are starving to death. But in, in, in the United States, uh, we don't have that. And and in Venezuela, it's it's oh, it's the the it's the opposition party, right? So we got to send in humanitarian aid, and we got to intervene. So here's here's um, you know Dick Smoker number one. This is Elliot Abrams at the UN, fucking the the war criminal, the guy who was was indicted for felony war crimes with Iran Contra and also in Nicaragua, right? Here he is again, right? He got a pardon from the Bush, the Bush, the Bush Senior, right? Gave him a pardon, and Trump hires the guy. Hey, fucking, I love this guy, man. He's fucking right, Mister Jew, Mister Mister Abrams, um, is is in the. This is him in the UN pointing the finger at Russia. Did it, right? Fucking Russia. Right? So the coup is still going on. The, the the illusion, I guess, has been shattered that the Venezuelan people are starving. Right? 
and and it's it's being caused by the sanctions, the the United States' unwillingness to lift the sanctions. And people say, oh no, 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 they created their own problems. But no. When you have a monster, monster monkey on your back, it's like a cancer, right? You everything else around you is is fine, except there's one big cancer that just keeps getting bigger and bigger until it kills you. And that's what the United States does. It it uses it uses austerity through the international fucking money fund and all these bullshit organizations, right? Basically, what we're doing is we're still stealing the, uh, we're locking their resources where where England just stole all the gold, right? Goldman Sachs is stealing the oil money, right? They can't trade with, with partner nations anymore because the U.S. will then turn on the partner nation and sanction them, right? It's true. It's like the fucking mafia. Right, it's the mob. Right, it's still going on in Venezuela, but we don't. But there's no problem there because it's uh, socialism. <laughs> See how ridiculous it is? No, it's 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 imperialism in our own nation, right? And it's a it's an unwillingness to to break from it. It's empowering oligarchy, right? That's what causes it. That's what causes the income and wealth inequality. Not so much, you know. That again, the analogy of the I'll say it again. The analogy of the banker. And the and the worker and the immigrant sitting at the table. There's 20 donuts, right? The banker grabs 19 for himself. He turns to the worker and he turns to the worker and says, "You better you better grab that last donut before the immigrant grabs it." Right? That that kind of shit. That's the reality of the situation. And guys like fucking Ab- Elliot Abrams, are you know, and Mike Pompeo and and uh, Steve Mnuchin and Donald Trump and and Mike Pence. Are, are escalating that that idea, right? That theory of, of austerity, right? Force your will on other people and they'll and they'll they'll succumb. They'll become obedient, right? Like in 1984, like in, in Animal Farm. Beat the shit out of them. Right? So that's Venezuela. Let's talk about there's no homelessness, right? In America, there's no poverty, right? Nothing. It's nothing. We're we're doing good, right? So here's a homeless in Seattle. I wanted to um this is, a, this is interesting, right? Every Sunday, the residents of this homeless encounter... This is the United States of America, right? <clears throat> We're saying that there's there's poverty in Venezuela, but right in our one of our, you know, uh, most beautiful cities, Seattle, there's people living in tents because they're 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 locked out of the system. They're they're the ninety nine percent, but they're also the sixty percent living in abject poverty. So much so that they live in tents in thirty degree weather. 10 miles south of Seattle, attend a compulsory... This is actually rather interesting, but you see they're for the participants. They're tent city. It's a clean and sober encampment. The kinds of people you get here are people who are recovering from... Is that where we're going? Tent cities? Or yeah. people who are... Tent cities. That's what, we, that's what we have in America now, right? Here they are in the freezing cold, right? It's another video. Okay, people, it's this. Ford Truck Month. And in it's time minutes. to join the... So uh, I'll, I want to share this one too. Uh, home, this is this is a uh, the Bowery dot org. It's a homeless um, uh, organization here in New York. They do some good work. You see that trucks around. Um, that's that's not going to play for us. So um, maybe it will. Yeah. So Joe Moreno. Let's listen to this jerk off. Uh, all the to get the vitamin D you need, you'd have. You got to clear those up before you, before you start your day. Here he is. Newly opened shelters like this one offered. They're place promoting the shelter, right? They're saying, "Oh, you can come in in the shelter." You know how many people get killed the in shelters? The biting cold these past two weeks was just too much for hey, some people living on the street. Hardy person, but once it hits thirty-one degrees, it gets to be extremely tough. Campers who pushed away help in the past. Living in the street, living outside, outdoors. Do we have a do we have a problem with the amount of real estate in our country? No, there's plenty of there's plenty of space. It's just you're priced out. Do you understand hyperinflation? Velocity of money is down because all the wealthy people are hoarding it. The top one percent is hoarding the money. Prevents f- velocity of money, the flow of money through the economy. Right. Rich people only spend the you know a little bit just to survive, and the rest they hoard. You, me, the rest of us, 
We spend everything and then some and debt ourselves. Uh, no, but not, not the wealthy. They don't do that. We're coming up to outreach workers, asking to wow, get Wow, life in America. They should put this in the fucking brochure when they, when they, when they uh, you know, call, call on immigrants. Yeah, we got, a, we got a tent city for you. The streets. Going inside and in their shelters. It was getting cold. It Whatever. frightened me. That's why I'm here. I don't normally go to a shelter. The navigation team. They're all, look at this. Look at this scene, right? Look at this scene. Just a whole row Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I'll set up a tent in the street. All right, so, so here's a uh, here's some statistics on homelessness. Right, not poverty. I gave you the statistic on poverty. Sixty percent of the country doesn't have four hundred dollars to their name. It's that's the definition of abject poverty. You're living so tight. All right, but uh, every night in our city, New York alone, four thousand people sleep on the street. All right, that's the bottom of the bottom. But Another 63,000 homeless. And that number goes, that number of homeless on the street goes way up in the summertime. And I, I plan to go out and, uh, and do some, you know, study on that. Actual video. People don't, the homeless guy, they don't like when you stick a camera in their face. But if you give them something, maybe a sandwich or $5, they'll talk to you and they'll, they'll come out of their, uh, you know, come out and talk to you. So I'll, I'll do some of that as the weather breaks. But there's 63,000 homeless men, women, and children. Because, again, we don't have a problem, right? The problem is Venezuela. The problem is France. The problem is, is, uh, is North Korea. It's everybody everybody but ourselves, right? It's fucking New Zealand. They, they're shooting each other, right? But, but, right, but we, have, we have the problem right here at home is what I'm trying to say. All right, so 63,000 homeless men and women spend their night instead within the shelter system. Shelters are so fucking dangerous in the city. People get stabbed in their sleep. They get robbed. They wake up. They, they, with, for the clothes on their back, they, somebody steals their shoes. They're walking out in the fucking, in the morning with no shoes. They slept in the shelter. Cops sleeping in the corner. You know, it's ridiculous, right? That this is, this is what we've, we've come to, right? One in seven people on food stamps, probably even more now. You want to believe that unemployment is 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 three and a half percent in America? It's probably fifteen to twenty percent. One in five people are homeless. That's not hard to uh, uh, jobless, unemployed. Not hard to believe at all, right? So, so that's all I wanted to say about that. So that was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of saying, but the, again, common thread. What is the common thread? It's it's poverty. It's lack of funds, right? It's, it's the idea that someone's coming in to take your shit. What little shit you have, someone wants to take it from you, right? So you're going to fight them off, right? And, and that's where the, the illusion of closed borders, right? Closed borders, immigration rules and, uh, and regulations are good. But someone like myself who likes to travel, or, or at least did when, when I had, you know, the, the, the ability to do that, the, the money to do that, was a wonderful thing and a, lo- a wonderful learning experience, and it's made me into the the brilliant orator that I am now. It's 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 um it's shaped me into the into the the great I am. I but tra- what I'm trying to say is traveling is a good thing, right? and let's not let's not try to say oh there's people from over there and over here because that shit comes right back at you because. One day when you try to travel and they don't let you into, into their country because they look at the Americans as separatists and crazies and gunslingers and kooks, right? So lighten up on it, all, all that travel shit because I don't want to lose my fucking passport f- for a bunch of fucking liberals online trying to say that travel is now, you know, uh, that, that caused New Zealand. The guy was traveling, right? Let's see where he went first before we, before we jump to that conclusion. So uh, I hope that was... Uh, that was a lot. Marcus Conte reporting. No, it's Conte reporting. Outside to a beautiful morning Where the trees are all a wagon My hair flag waving The scenery raging My life love cascading And the smog hangs Over everything When I'm outside in the real good